welcome to the St. Andrews community. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Jeff Harrison. I'm the co-director of Curriculum Development Instruction here in the Lower School of St. Andrews. Um, our other director is Dr. Chu, Johnny Chu. Um, either one of us uh, during the year will, will be spending a lot of time with your children um, as also support in the classroom as well. Uh, the reason for this video is to give you some language that we um, use here as part of our math program so that as a new student coming into our school um, it's language you will have already heard and been exposed to um, through this short video um, and again if you have any follow-up questions please feel f free to reach out to me and I'm happy to answer them uh, my email is gharrison at sasaustin.org and, and I'm happy to, to answer any questions you may have as a follow-up so one of the things we look at is really creating number sense for our students um, because ultimately that's really the foundation for algebraic reasoning um, and, they f and the research has informed us um, really over the last 15 years um, that for so many students the issue happens when they get into higher levels of math. If a child doesn't understand where an answer is being derived from, in other words they don't understand the process, they under understand the solution, that's where they get themselves in trouble. So I'd like to share with you some of the strategies we have for each one of the four operations. Um, with the addition strategies, um, I'm actually going to share with you today doubles, near doubles, breaking each number into its place value, and adding up in chunks. Um, and we're going to use 249 plus 248. So doubles, near doubles. Well, the nice thing about this one is we could look at 249 and be like, well, wait a second, 249 is very close to 250. We know that 250 plus 250 is 500. And then all we have to do is recognize, well, we added 1 to 49 and 2. So we're going to subtract 3 from that. So we know our answer must be 497. So that's how we would use that strategy. Um, the other strategy, breaking each number into its place value, is just that. So we do 200 plus 40 plus 9, 200 plus 40 plus 8, sorry I did forget the plus signs, that's my fault. So when we add these all up, we have 400 plus 80 plus 17, so we know that we add them all together, we have an answer of 497. The last one is adding up in chunks, the adding up in chunks works this way where you start off with your 249 and say, okay, well, if I added first, if I took the 200 to that, that would give me to 449. And if I add the 40 to that, that would give me to 489. And then if I think about why well, I have 8 left, if I add 8 to that, well, we know... 8 is the same as 1 plus 7. The reason I did that is 489 plus 1 is 490. 490 plus 7 is 497. Now, understand for a lot of you, you would have just done it as an algorithm. And there's nothing wrong with the algorithm. It's just recognizing there's other options you could have had. For this problem, the most efficient way is the doubling near is the doubles near doubles which is this method here. So this is ultimately the best way to do it. It's the most efficient way. The other two methods are just methods I'm showing you, but let's be honest, they're not the most efficient. I know for some of you as an algorithm, you would have said, well, 9 plus 8 is 17. You just said, carry my 1, which is technically, you're not carrying a 1, you're carrying 10. Then 1 plus 4 plus 4, so that's your 9. So then you have 497. So that's how we could have done the addition. When we look, go on to subtraction, Within the realm of subtraction, um, we have a few different ways we can do it. We are specifically going to focus on place value and negative numbers and keeping a constant difference today. Um, adding up, removal, adjusting one number to create an easier number. There are other strategies you will be learning um, when you come to St. Andrews, but I want to just focus on these two just so you can see the difference. So when we have 93, lose 68. So if we look at the place value, well, we know 90 plus 3, 60 
plus 8. We subtract 90 lose 60 is 30. 3 lose 8 is a debt of 5. What's 50 lose 5? The answer is 25. Okay, that's place value in negative numbers. Now, for the other one, which is keeping a constant difference, we actually look at 93 lose 68. And we say, well, keeping a constant difference. Well, if I added 2 to 68, that would make it 70. But if I had 2 to 68, I have to add 2 to 93, so that makes it 95. So 95 lose 70, again, has this answer of 25. Again, those are probably the two most efficient strategies for these numbers. So we have place value negative numbers, keeping a constant difference. Again, you could use to use an algorithm. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, that's a rule. It's not, it's not decomposing the numbers and having you recognize how the numbers work. Now we're moving on to multiplication. For this one, we're actually going to focus on uh, three different strategies here. We're going to focus on partial products, doubling and halving, and breaking factors into smaller factors. So partial products uh, is probably the one that I, I find m to be the most efficient, even more efficient than an algorithm very often. Because what you're thinking of is you're allowing yourself to work with friendly numbers. Um, so if you had 25, and we think about partial products, well, we know that 10 plus 8 is the same as 18. So if we multiplied, well, if we said, well, if I have the value, what's the value of 25 tens? What's the value of 25 eighths? Well, 25 tens is 250. 25 eighths is 200. Add those together, we know we have an answer of 450. That's using one way of partial products. Doubling and halving is actually just that. You take one number and you double it and you half the other number. So if we took the numbers 25 and 18, so if I double 25, that's 50. If I double 50, that's 100. If I took 18 and I halved it, what's half of 18? 9. What's half of 9? 4 and 1 half, or 4.5. Well, so then we say, well, what's 9 times 50? 450, or if you're comfortable, what's 4 and a half times 100? 450. But doubling and halving is another, another very useful strategy with certain numbers. It's not the most useful strategy of all numbers. How breaking factors into smaller factors works is just that. Well, we know that 25 is 5 times 5. We know that 18 is 2 times 9. So, if I think about this, what's 5 times ten, 2? 10. What's 5 times 9? 45. What's the value of 45 tens? 450. So again, those are three possible um, strategies that are also used with those numbers. And then we're going to move on to division. So with division, you know, you do always have that opportunity to fall back to long division. Or, again, just think about how numbers work. Uh, we're going to really focus on uh, the partial quotients. Um, multiplying up and proportional. Proportional reason really focus on as a fraction. Multiplying up is really, uh, it's very similar to partial quotients. Um, so let's just focus on the partial quotients and look at partial quotients really two different ways. Um, one of the ways you can do it, and it's not always the most efficient way, is you can look at it as one big unit bar. And we can say, okay, we have... If we had 235 pieces of candy, and we want to share them with 12 people, we're going to break it up into with 12 people. So there's our 12 people. So maybe right off the bat, you give each person 10. Well, if we gave 10 to every spot all the way across, we know that out of our 235 pieces of candy, we gave away 120 of those pieces of candy. So, we still have 115 left. So it's like, well, okay, I could give away 5 to everybody. That's going to give away 60 pieces of candy. I could give away 4 
that's me 48 pieces of candy because remember once I do this it's all the way across to every other category and so I'm left with seven small problem is I can't share seven pieces with 12 people but what if I broke each one of those seven pieces up so if we think about this as seven sections So we could either say we have an answer of, I basically get 19, and then we're going to have a remainder of 7. Or if we truly share equally, we're not just going to put those 7 aside, we're going to share them with everybody. So 1 12th of this piece, 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 1 12th, 1 12th, and 1 12th. So we have a total of... 7 12. So in other words, each one of our friend, 12 friends that was shared with is going to get 19 and 7 twelfths. So that's, that's called a unit bar with partial quotients. The other way um, we look at partial quotients is, is actually looking at it with a division bar and, and really saying to ourselves, Would actually look like this. So we still have our 235 and we say to ourselves, okay, so we could give everybody 10, that's our 120. We could give everybody 5, that's our 60. We can give everybody 4, That's our 48. And then again, we still have 7 left over. So this, this part is not changing. You still have 7 to share with. So when we're all said and done, we have an answer of 19 and 7 twelfths. Now, the reason um, we focus on the partial quotients, because in that way, you know, so often when a child uses long division, if they don't know their multiplication facts, they can't do long division, they're stuck. Partial quotients allows you to fall back to friendly numbers and still be able to solve the problem. So this is just a flavor of um, some of the number strategies that your children will be exposed to this year. Again, if you have any questions, please reach out, and uh, we look forward to having you part of our community. Thank you.